Welcome to another edition of the U.S. Boiler University. My name is Tom Secondino. I'm a technical associate with U.S. Boiler. Our video today is going to be on the Alta Annual Preventative Maintenance and Cleaning. We're going to begin by number one, making sure that all the safety devices are off, such as the gas valve and the power switch. Removing the front cover. On the later versions, you would fold this down and slide to the left. On earlier versions, you would remove the tether, unplug the ignition cable, and allow the control cover to fold forward. So to begin with, we're going to disassemble the heat exchanger. In order to do that, we have to separate the nut on the gas valve and remove the four screws on the burner door. We do have a quick disconnect clamp on the Venturi side of the CSST. We strongly recommend that uh, most people use the nut on the gas valve as it's far easier to assemble. We recommend also that you use the appropriate sized wrench. However, because most people will have a pair of channel locks, we're going to disassemble this with what you typically have in the truck. To avoid galling the nut, you want to grab it by the corners and just loosen the nut. Uh, does not to be have, uh, doesn't have to be tightened overly tight, just secure. Loosen the nut and slide the gasket out for the gas valve and place somewhere it, where it will not be, get lost. Four 10 millimeter nuts on the burner door. Uh, just loosen these in a star pattern. So you can avoid torquing the burner door. Once they're loose, you can take them off with your fingers. And we recommend using either a wrench or a 10 millimeter nut driver. We strongly do not recommend using any type of power tool or anything like that as you run the risk of snapping the studs. Remove the ground wire. As you pull the burner assembly out, simply remove the communication cable and the power wire to the fan. And this is your burner assembly. Burnham offers a heat exchanger cleaning kit for water tube boilers. Part number 111705-01 that is well suited to the service of the Alta boiler as well. In the kit, we have protective discs to protect the rear target wall. You would take one of these discs and simply insert it into the heat exchanger. Uh, as a little pro tip, because the disc is white, we recommend making some type of a red mark so that you'll remind yourself to take the disc back out of the heat exchanger during assembly. You should have a bottle, a spray bottle of water. We don't need to use any caustic chemicals because we have a cleaning kit that will aid you in cleaning the heat exchanger services without any aggressive chemicals. You would simply spray the water inside the heat exchanger. In the kit, we have a heat exchanger cleaning tool. It's important to note that the heat exchanger needs to be clean throughout the, the gaps between the tubes and heat exchanger. And you can simply use this tool to go in between all the tubes and you'll notice that the tool stops. That's a rod that supports the tubes on the back side where you cannot see. So you would just simply go up over that rod, go to the next set, and clean in between there as well. Notice that this tube, this tool, will go into the heat exchanger about that deep. So again, simply clean in between every tube, in between every section of rod, 360 degrees around the heat exchanger and from front to back. When you're done, you can simply spray out the heat exchanger again, avoiding getting any water on the target wall. And we give you a Nylox rotary disc 
you can add this to an extension on your drill and simply use a drill to clean out any surface deposits that are on the tubing. Once again, you can spray this out. Everything will flush out through the trap and we'll show you how to clean the trap a little bit later in the video. While you have the boiler disassembled, a few things that are important to check are the burner sleeve and also the igniter. You want to make sure that the burner is clean, no deformities, and that the end cap is intact. And you also want to make sure that the igniter is clean, uh, clean as necessary. You also want to check the gap between the electrode and the ground strap, and also the gap between the electrode and the burner sleeve. Finally, you want to make sure that the exterior gasket, we call this the burner door outer gasket, that this is in good repair. If it's not, replace as necessary. Reassembly basically is the reverse of disassembly. So we've already removed the disc. Again, you want to be sure to take the protective disc out of the heat exchanger before assembly. Uh, to aid in that, you might want to put a red mark or some kind of a red X on this to remind you to remove it before you assemble the burner. So you're simply going to take the burner, spin it. Little pro tip, it's always easier to get the plugs in before you insert the burner into the cabinet. So we're going to put our burner harnesses together. We have a power cable and a communication cable. We line this up with the studs on the heat exchanger body. Pick the nut up. Hold that securely against the heat exchanger and put at least one nut hand tight to secure it to the heat exchanger body. We grab our gasket for the gas valve. Insert the gas valve gasket. And very important, we want to make sure that this nut is able to spin down by hand at least four turns. If you can't spin the nut down easily by hand at least four turns, you probably have it cross-threaded and turning it any further would damage it. So again, make sure that you can tighten this almost completely by hand. Grab the remaining nuts. And we're going to secure the burner door to the heat exchanger. Another little pro tip, sometimes it's not a bad idea to put some never seize on the studs to avoid galling. And again, we're going to tighten these using either a wrench or a nut driver avoid using an impact gun and we're going to tighten these in a star pattern now that the nuts are secure we can use the appropriate wrench to secure the gas valve nut and again this is a negative pressure gas valve, so the nut does not to be need to the nut does not need to be excessively tight. Once we have that assembled, we're going to reconnect our ground. We're going to fold the burner door up, reconnect our ignition cable, and on the earlier models, we're going to reconnect the leash to support the door.